Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is spoon. S-P-O-O-N. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... When you call me that smile. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Uh, Groucho, we have some people with interesting occupations that were selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. I'd like to have you meet them right now. Uh, Mrs. Lucille Goldner and Mr. Augustus A. Ward, Jr., come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Uh, Lucille Goldner. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Lucille. Oh, well. Uh... Changes my whole attitude. Uh, Mr. Augustus A. Ward, Jr. Yes. Mrs. Uh, Golner, where are you from? I'm from Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks? You were born in Sherman Oaks? No, no, I was born in Lebo, Kansas. Oh. <laughs> You're from the cow country, yeah? That's what they tell me. Oh. Who told you that? My mother. Oh. Interesting conversation, but... <laughs> uh, how, did, how did you meet your husband, Lucille? Uh, he removed my appendix. <laughs> and then? Well, then, uh, a few years later, I married him. A few years later? Yes, uh-huh. You were waiting for this wound to heal, was that? He kept you in stitches most of the time. Right? Yeah, we'll try to cut up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, those are the standard jokes we expect when we have a position on this. Show, right? Now, uh, Mrs. Goldman, I understand you have a, an interesting occupation. Uh, just what is it you do? Well, Besides I... Besides luring doctors. <laughs> I raise chinchillas. You ra- How high? <laughs> what do you mean, you raise chinchillas? Uh, well, I ra- I'm a chinchilla rancher. Oh, well, what is a chinchilla? Well, a chinchilla is a very beautiful and luscious uh, small rodent. You mean it's a rat? Uh, well, it's a rodent in that it has a simple stomach. But, uh, has a what? A simple stomach. Why doesn't he go see your husband? <laughs> and uh, uh, it, uh, well, it's it's very very has a very dense fur. It has between oh eighty to ninety to a hundred uh, hairs out of each hair follicle, whereas you only have one. <laughs> and so, of course, you can see the. Let's keep this on an impersonal basis. <laughs> I don't mind you describing a rat, but don't include me in it. <laughs> now, why would anybody want to waste their time on silly little rodents Ooh, they when come. there are so many other ways of wasting your time? <laughs> well, uh, maybe one of the reasons is because a full-length chinchilla coat that costs approximately $75,000. Now, how many of these $75,000 coats can you make from a chinchilla? Well, <laughs> it takes approximately 200 chinchillas to make one $75,000 for a coat. Sounds like they have a powerful union, these kids. <laughs> I suppose I want to buy one of these little rodents. What's the cheapest you'd sell me one for? Oh, I'd sell you one for about $500. $500? That sounds reasonable. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute. One chinchilla isn't going to do me any good. I wasn't born yesterday. Even. <laughs> How much will, uh, will a good pair cost me? Well, a good breeding pair, the standard price is $1,650. Apparently, these chinchillas weren't born yesterday either. <laughs> now, Mr. Augustus A. Ward, uh, that's, that's a pretty uh, highfalutin name, isn't it? What is the A for? Uh, I hate to say, sir, it's Afton. Now, why should I call you, Augustus? Should I call you Gus? No, sir. Call me Jerry. That's my nickname. <laughs> Your nickname is Jerry, eh? Yes. Well, that's good enough for me, Tom. <laughs> now, uh, Gus, what sort of work do you do? I'm, uh, I dro- I'm dropped by a parachute into forest fires to fight fires, sir. Oh, some people are born lucky, aren't they? <laughs> they just fall into those soft gravy jugs. <laughs> You drop into fires? What kind of a job is that? They call us smoke jumpers, sir. 
Oh, smoke joint. I used to smoke joint business. I, know. <laughs> I switched to cigars. And half the time, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> the jumpers taste a little better, that's right. <laughs> now, tell us about smoke jumping. For example, uh, why do they have to drop you by parachute? Well, the well, main reason is, sir, is they drop us where they can't get to the spot where a mobile unit cannot get to or by foot. Uh, in addition to smoke jumping, what other soft jobs have you done? Uh, Deep sea diver, sir. <laughs> Well, uh, could you tell us something about your diving experiences? Have you had any close calls while you were submerged? Yes, sir. I was uh, submerged under mud out in San Pedro, eight feet of mud over me. And this time I got stuck in the mud. And uh, it was another barge about 25 yards away that was diving. And there was a girl above aboard, and she came down and pulled me up. Later become my wife. <laughs> And you've been stuck in the mud ever since. <laughs> well, I must say you're an unusual couple, and I must say that because it's true. And Augustus Afton Ward, Jr., I wish you the best of luck in the work you're doing. Yeah. Now, in just one minute, you want to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Right now, here's something of particular interest to everybody. Everywhere, folks are talking about the beautiful new 1952 DeSoto. The car designed for you and your budget, too. And when you get behind the wheel of the new, the 1952 DeSoto, you'll be talking, too, about those big, wide doors you walk through instead of crawl through, and that roomy, uncrowded interior where you sit naturally. You relax in seats that are chair high. You'll be talking about the DeSoto Auroflow shock absorbers that give you one of the smoothest rides you've ever known, about DeSoto waterproof ignition, that gives you sure starting in even the dampest weather. And how you'll like those famous DeSoto safety rim wheels because of the protection they give your family in case of blowouts. Sure enough, from every standpoint, the exciting new 1952 DeSoto is designed for you and your budget, too. So don't wait. See it today. Ride in it. Drive the great 1952 DeSoto. Now at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. The low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. Now let's see how you work together as a team. George, explain the rules. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question later in the show. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected Songs of the South. Now, here's your first question. How much of the $20 will you bet? Sixteen, sir. Sixteen. Give me the title of this uh, Southern song. Okay, Jerry. Oh, Kentucky Home. Oh, Kentucky Home is right. Poor Jerry doesn't get a chance to tell. Well, you're off to a great start. You have $36. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $36 will you bet this time? $35.50. $35.50. What's the name of this southern song? What is it? Starsville in Alabama is right. You have seventy-one dollars and fifty cents. Here's your third question. How much of the seventy-one fifty are you going to bet? Seventy-one. Okay, let's see if you can identify this song. Play, Jerry. George, on my mind. George, you're on my mind. Is you right? And you have one hundred forty-two dollars and fifty cents. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? All of it. Okay. What's the title of this song? And you wind up with a grand total of two hundred and eighty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a termite control man chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air and a housewife from our audience, Groucho. And here they come, Mrs. Vivian Klein, Mr. John Roach, meet Groucho Marx. 
Welcome, kids, to your bet your life. Say the sacred word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Vivian Klein and Mr. John Roach. Mr. Roach, you're a termite control man, is that right? I am, sir, yes. Termite control, huh? Now, uh, who do you work for, uh, Mr. Roach? What a name for a guy who sells termites. <laughs> what do you get for a dozen termites? We haven't been selling by the dozen. Like you don't sell them? Marks. No, sir. What do you do? Do you buy them? Are you in the business of buying and selling termites? Uh, I, I don't clearly know just what your business is, Mr. Roach. What a name for a guy in a termite. <laughs> Well, who do you work for, Mr. Roach? I have my own place to do this. Oh. And uh, Mrs. Vivian Klein, uh, you're a housewife? Yes. Uh, where were you born? And a grandma, too. <laughs> housewife and a grandma. Uh-huh. Huh? Where were you born, uh, Vivian? I was born in um, Corn, Iowa. There is a town called... Uh, yes. Where is Corn, Corn Mrs. Klein? Is that it's close not... to Succotash, Texas? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh... I, I've been there, but I don't know where. It's about three miles from Kingsley. Oh, and where, and, and where is Kingsley? Well, that's about, um, oh, 50 miles from Sioux City, Iowa. You know where Sioux City is? Yes, yes. That's near Sakatash. <laughs> now, uh, what sort of work does your husband do, Mrs. Klein? He's an oil worker. He works in oil? Mm-hmm. I bet you never hear a squeak out of him, do you? <laughs> where, where did you meet your husband, Vivian? Was he getting uh, oiled up at the time? No. I met him in, um... Oklahoma. La Kemp, Oklahoma, in a general store. Where? In La Kemp, Oklahoma, in a general store. La Kemp. Is that near Corn? No, that. Where is, where is Camp? Well, it's not there no more. It was in you No Man's Land. It was in No Man's Land, and it just disappeared now. It's not there. You say you met him in No Man's Land? No, I met him in a general store. You met him in a general store, mm-hmm. huh? How long yes, ago um, did you meet him, uh, Oh, about 38 years. It was in a general store in Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> what was he doing? Taking out no, your appendix? No, my father <laughs> run the general store. You know what general store is? Oh, sure. That's well, where they sell generals. No, no, no. no. Your father ran a general store, Yes, huh? he ran the general store. Now, then, how did you meet your husband? Well, my husband used to come in there. He was on sale there? <laughs> no, Everything else was on sale there. I don't he know why. He farmed there. He farmed in the store? No, he farmed <laughs> He raised wheat. In the, in the store? No, not in the store. Oh, he raised sucker tags in the store. But he used to come in the store, and, and he'd come in the store, and, and uh, we'll get some groceries, and then he'd give my mother arithmetic problems, problems with a catch to him, you know, that you have to figure out on. Yeah, and then, like what? Then while my mother's figuring out these problems, well, he'd sit around the stove and talk, you know, and... So, you know, these big stoves, those great big fat stoves, you know, like you burn wood and coal in. What well, kind of stoves? Big, great big fat stoves. They call them pot belly stoves, I think. Your father had a pot belly and your husband sat around no. the store? No. Giving your mother arithmetic lessons? That's a, that's a fine store, all right. I don't think it's anything like Marshall Thiel in Chicago. <laughs> All right, then what happened? Here your mother was bewildered by these arithmetic lessons. Mm -hmm. How old were you then, Vivian? I was 19. Mm -hmm. And she'd figure out the arithmetic problems, and that went on a while. And then one day, why, he said, I'm going to go to Colorado and take a homestead. And so I said, well, I'm going to go with you. That was his way of proposing, see, I guess. It was my way of taking it. Tell me that every time a man said he was going to Colorado, he got married? No, but the kid said he said he was going to go take a homestead. And I he just... said he was going to take a homestead, and he was looking at your mother, wasn't he? No, he was looking at me. He was eyeing you up, uh-huh. and you said yes, huh? I just said I was going to go with him. Did you start for Cripple Creek immediately? No, we had to get ready first because he butchered, see. He and... butchered who? Butchered a hog. He you butchered a hog for the wedding? No, He's no. He's a really a romantic fellow, this guy. He married. says, will you marry me? And then he went out and killed a sow. <laughs> And then I made peach butter. We like peach butter, and I made peach egg. Peach butter? I egg. wouldn't get married with any other kind. <laughs> I made eight gallon of it, see. You made eight gallons of peach eight butter? Eight gallons of peach butter. And, and then you went to Cripple Creek. So then we got the covered wagon out, and he got the mules out. We had mules. Bill and Lade, we called them. Who? We called them Bill and Lade. Oh, I remember them very well. <laughs> and, uh, so then we went and... It used to be Bill and Lading. It was... <laughs> And they shortened it to Bill and Lay. <laughs> well, what is peach butter? 
Don't you know what peach butter is? No, I said. Oh, I'll bring you over some sometime. Well, it's I good. Huh? Well, when you cook, you put, put your peaches and you cook them down and put sugar in them and cook it down until it gets thick. Oh, it's just preserves, in other words, huh? No, it's peach butter. It's different. <laughs> and we put it on down to the uh, homestead. Then, well, uh, we dug a dugout. Do you know what a dugout is? No, I said anything like peach butter? <laughs> no. And we dug a dugout. You dig that down in the ground like a cellar. And when you're sitting down, you can't see out the windows, because this little window's about this high, you know. And this was your honeymoon cottage? Yes, uh-huh. And uh, we had lots of ground, but, and we had to haul water 12 miles in barrels. Well, you certainly have the pioneer spirit, Vivian. Sure. It was, it was people like you who helped to make America what it is today. It was a lot of fun then. <laughs> Now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Mr. Phantom is going to remind our listeners. The Chinchilla Rancher and the Smoke Jumper won $285, and the secret word is still spoon. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected slang expressions. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Here's your first question. How much of the $20 will you bet? Sixteen. Sixteen dollars. What is the expression which, when translated literally, means to plunge headlong into the water, but in slang means a cheap cabaret? A dive? A dive is right. And you're on your way with $36. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $36 will you bet on your second question? $32. Mm-hmm. 32 All right. Uh, what is the expression which means a male deer, but in slang means a dollar? A buck. A buck is right. <laughs> You now have $68. Here's your third question. How much of the 68 are you going to try? 68. 68? The whole 68? Mm-hmm. Okay. What is the expression, which means a lump, a piece, or a chunk, but in slang means a sailor? A gob. A gob is right. You now climb to $136. I didn't know a sailor was a lump. I never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the $136 are you going to wager? It all All of it? Mm -hmm. What is the expression which means an island of the Far East, but in slang means coffee? Uh, Java. Java is right. (laughs) Very nice. Wind up with a grand total of $272. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Roger, I saw a piece in the paper about an unusual college student, so I asked him if he'd join us tonight. And here he is, Mr. Bush Manson and his son, Bush Manson, Jr. Gentlemen, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Bush Manson, Sr. and Bush Manson, Jr., eh? Father and son, eh? You're both so young-looking, I'm not sure which is which. Uh, Which one of you is the old man? He is the one with the mustache. <laughs> now, uh, since you're both named Bush, I'll get all confused when I address you. Bush Jr., what do your pals call you? Bush. Bush. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go the other way. Bush Sr., what do your friends call you? Bush. <laughs> you're looking at a man who's going to make an appointment with a psychoanalyst first thing in the morning. <laughs> I'll be on that couch by 9 o'clock. <laughs> peach butter or no peach butter? <laughs> Senior, what do you call Junior? And if you say you call him Bush, I'm going back in the vaudeville with Harpo and Chico. <laughs> well, I call him Bush, but sometimes I call him Speedy. Well, thank heavens. One Speedy in the hand is like two Bushes in the bush. <laughs> How old are you, Speed? Fourteen. And Bush, what's your age? Well, I just turned 41. Well, if you turn 41 far enough, you'll be 14, too. <laughs> what school do you go to, Speedy? George Washington College Junior High School. Junior High School? I thought Fenneman said you were an unusual college student. Speedy, you're beating around the bush again. <laughs> Would you mind explaining? He's the one that goes to college. At 41, he goes to college? I may not wait until the morning to see that analyst. I wonder if there's an all-night analyst around town. <laughs> Bush, is this true? Are, are you a college student? Yes, I attend uh, Los Angeles State College. 
When did you first enroll? I'm a senior, uh, but I enrolled in 1928. Bush, <laughs> you've been in college for 24 years. Well, nowadays, that's about par for the course. Isn't it? <laughs> How come you've been that long in school? Well, I went to school three years, and then I had to fall out, and after 19 years, I went back again. You were absent from school for 19 years? <laughs> Imagine the excuse he brought his teacher. <laughs> Dear teacher, please excuse Bush for being absent. He overslept. <laughs> Signed, Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> How did you happen to leave college uh, 19 years ago? Well, I got married, and after the birth of a child, I had the family to take care of. Speedy, did you know you ruined your father's college career? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What have you got to say to it? And it better be good. It wasn't me. It was Albert. <laughs> A likely story. And an old one, too. It wasn't me. It was Albert. Bush, it was Albert. He's my older brother. How much older? He's 17. Well, give my regards, will you? <laughs> Do you have a job in addition to your college studies? Yes, I work, uh, say, uh, seven days a week. <laughs> Drive a uh, produce truck uh, six of those days. And over the weekend, I work as a playground director, assistant playground director. He's quite an amazing man, this fellow. <laughs> Now, Speedy, has he told us everything, or has he uh, left out a few things? Well, he plays football for L.A. State. <laughs> now, wait a minute, uh, Bush. Is this true? Do you, do you play football at the age of 41? Well, I play, uh, play it on L.A. State's varsity. I should have known that's the only thing that could keep a man in college for 28 years. <laughs> Aren't you pretty old for that sort of thing, uh, Bush? Well, they tell me I'm the oldest collegiate football uh, player in the country. Now, Speedy, is the old man pretty good with the football? Yes, he is. He played national championship uh, for three years. Well, He's practically all-American uh, Negro football player, huh? <laughs> yes. Is there anyone left in the audience who has the slightest doubt that life uh, does begin at 41? <laughs> This would have been very interesting. And I know about 41 because I started there three times myself. <laughs> now you've got to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Mr. Fenham is going to remind our listeners. The Chinchilla Rancher and the Smoke Jumper still lead with $285. The secret word is still spoon. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected farm animals and birds. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Ten dollars. Ten bucks? Yeah. All right. What is a leghorn? A chicken. A chicken is right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You have $30. Then you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of your $30 will you bet on your second question? You still go ten. Ten. What kind of an animal is a pole in China? P O L A N D, China. Take a guess if you don't know. Duck, is it? No, no, they gave you the wrong oink. It's a pig, huh? <laughs> you now have twenty dollars. You now you have twenty dollars. All right, here's your third question. How much will you bet? To you. How much you got to bet? $15. 15 bucks. What is a Palomino? Palomino is a horse. Is a horse is right. <laughs> You're climbing again. You have $35. $35 is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to go for? Uh, 25 What is a Hereford? It's a cow. A cow is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $60. And that means the Chinchilla Rancher and the Smoke Jumper with $285 in just one minute. Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. (laughs) 
Here's a figure every car owner ought to write down and remember. 85%. Because 85% of all car repairs are caused by either faulty lubrication or no lubrication at all. That's how important it is to have your car lubricated regularly at a place where they work according to factory standards. And I mean your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. You'll find there's a vast difference between ordinary grease jobs and the thorough lubrication your DeSoto Plymouth dealer gives your car. And you'll be glad to know, too, DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics are qualified to handle any and every type of service. They're not only well-trained, they have the experience and skill, plus the most modern tools and equipment and the right factory-approved parts. So, for a first-class lubrication job, or any kind of repair, take your car where you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here comes the Chinchilla Rancher and the Smoke Jumper, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. None of that oink oink out there. <laughs> here it is. Only one city in the world can lay claim to the distinction of being situated on two continents, Europe and Asia. What is the name of this city? What's the answer you two have decided upon? Come on. No, no answer. Well, we'll say Berlin. Huh? Just... No, no. It's... No, I'm no. saying it's Istanbul, uh, Constantinople. <laughs> you were a long ways off. That's the correct answer, Istanbul, or Constantinople, and we quote as our source the Encyclopedia Americana. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Istanbul, so that means the big question next week will be worth... $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win the quiz, George? $285 well, for the quiz. that's not so bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth... $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the 1952 DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Take time for safety. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs>